Hi, in this video, I'm going to be talking you through 1995 step one, question one. So if all has gone to plan, the step question should appear here. And let's get started with the question. So the first part is asking us to look at a cubic equation, cubic inequality, of course, and um, solve for the values that satisfy that. So we're going to get a range of values because it's an inequality. So first with an inequality, we'll solve the equality and then figure out which direction is satisfied by that equality. So first we'll see which values make it equal to zero and then we'll look at how it interacts with other values and see which ones are greater or less than zero. So to start, we're gonna have to find what, cause it's much easier to solve a quadratic. We know how to do that with the quadratic equation and completing the square and things like that. Cubics are a bit more difficult, but if we can find one value that solves the cubic, then we can factorize that out and get a quadratic, which will then, then solve the whole equation so that we can get three values for x. Um, so looking at the equation, we've got x cubed minus 4x squared minus x plus 4 is greater than or equal to 0. But at the moment, we're just going to try and solve equality. So if we look at this, we can see a very good place to start is very low numbers. Um, quite often, step questions are kind to you and will give you a low number, a simple integer that solves it. So just by looking at this, you can go, OK, let's try 0. But four here is the is the constant term in this so when x is zero we get four equals to zero which is not true then the next one we try would be one and one's looking promising so if we substitute one in we get one minus four minus one plus four and you can see the fours match up and the ones match up and it cancels to equal zero which is really nice. And we could see that from the fact that we've got two negatives. So we've got negative five, negative five, and plus five, plus, negative four, negative one to make five, and plus one, plus four to make five. So they cancel out. So because that's solved for, because we know that x is one solves this, we know that x minus one equals zero is a factor. So we can use algebraic long division to substitute this out. So if you haven't seen this before, it's the same as regular long division, but with algebraic terms. So it's a little weird having to deal with the algebra as well. But we go, what divides x cubed? How many, how many x's into x cubed? We get x squared go in. And then we multiply x squared by x minus 1. So we get x cubed minus x squared. And then we take away. So we get minus 3x squared minus x to carry the next one along. Minus 3x minus 3x squared plus 3x by multiplying minus 3x by x minus 1. And then we subtract that again to get minus 4x plus four, and we can see that's nicely a linear term of that. So that's, that's minus four times this. So we get minus four there. And if we multiply minus four by this, we get minus four X plus four, and that cancels out to make zero. And that fact, the fact that we've got zero there has shown that us finding that X minus one here was correct. And X minus one is indeed a factor because it divides it nicely with no remainder. So we now get x minus 1, x squared minus 3x minus 4 is greater than or equal to 0. Then this is just a quadratic. So standard way to solve a quadratic, we look for a number that multiplies to make minus 4, or two numbers that multiply to make minus 4, and add to make minus 3. And that gives us x minus 1, x plus 1 x minus 4 because minus 4 plus 1 is minus 3 minus 4 times 1 is minus 4 so that greater than or equal to 0 so we're first solving for equality so we're looking for x is minus 1 1 and 4 these are our four terms 
We now want to... Four terms? Three terms. Here we go. These are our three solutions to the equality problem. So now to solve for the inequality, we're going to draw a graph and try and sketch this out. I always try and draw a graph with, with just using a ruler to draw the axes makes things so much easier because it just makes it makes it neater and easier to see. Even if your graph itself is really wonky, just the fact that your axes are, are straight looks looks much nicer. So I'm plotting out here minus one minus minus one one and four, which are our solutions here. And we know that if x is zero, y is four here. We also have the clue that x cubed, the you can't see this, sorry, x cubed, the coefficient of x cubed here is positive, so we know it's going to be a positive x cubed graph. In general, an x cubed graph will tend to negative infinity as we go to negative infinity in x, and it will tend to positive infinity as we go to positive infinity in x. There we go, yeah. Um, so because we're tending to negative infinity here, because we've got a positive coefficient of x cubed, if it was a negative coefficient of x cubed, it would be the opposite. So as we tend to negative x, we tend to positive infinity. And as we tend to positive x, we tend to negative infinity. But here we can just plot between these. Each one in our term here is a single um, root, is only used once. So there's no sort of just touching the axis every time it every time it touches the axis it crosses the axis so we can sketch here it goes up down and back up and that goes to infinity and that goes to negative infinity so now we're looking for the values for which this is positive so we can see here because this is f of x, which is this. We can see here that it's positive between these values. And it's also positive greater than 4. And if we look here, it's, a, it's not a strict inequality. So when it's equal, it's also true. So we're looking for these values and that value including minus 1, 1, and 4. So we can write out our final answer is minus 1 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 1, x greater than or equal to 4. So that's our answer to the first problem. The second part, we're finding the three lines in the xy plane on which and then a suspicious looking cubic that looks very similar to the previous one we just dealt with. So if you look at that, x cubed minus 4x squared y minus xy squared plus 4y cubed equals 0. Every time we look at a term, so if we look at this term, this term, this term, or this term, if we add up the powers we always get 3. So x cubed, x squared, y, so that adds 2 plus 1 adds to 3, and so on. They all add to 3. So the dimensions of each term is all equal. This makes things quite easy for us because if we want to just take a y out, we take y cubed out, we get x over y, all cubed, minus 4x over y all squared minus x over y plus 4 equal to 0. And don't worry about the fact that we've taken y out because we haven't divided by y. We've just taken it out as a factor here. We can then see that this cubic is exactly the same as our previous cubic that we had here. They're the same, but it's x over y instead of x. So our same factorization from before works, which is really useful. So we get y cubed, and then instead it's x over y. So we get x over y minus 1, x over y plus 1. 
and x over y minus 4, wasn't it? Yeah, equal to 0. And then we can multiply back through by this y. Taking this y out just simplified things and made it easier to see how to do the factorization. This was spe It was specifically because we have the same number in each one. So when we divide through by y cubed, we get x over y to the same power every time. So in our, yeah, so x cubed over y cubed and x squared over y squared, which is really useful. But we can then multiply out. So we essentially do y x over y minus 1 and then another y here x over y plus 1 and then another y here x over y minus 4 equal to 0. So we're kind of distributing our y cubed out between the three terms. And so if we multiply each one of these, we get x minus y, x plus y, x minus 4y equal to 0. So this is the three lines in the x dot y plane on which that is satisfied because we've factorised the equation that we got given in the first place. We now get three terms. One of these has to be equal to 0. So in the same way that when we have, um, for example, x minus 1, x minus 2 equal to 0, one of these two has to be equal to 0. Instead, one of these three has to be equal to 0. So either x minus y equals 0, or x plus y equals 0, or x minus 4y equals 0. And each of these implies we can rearrange to make it in terms of y, which gives us a nicer, nicer line. y equals x. This implies y equals minus x. And this implies y is a quarter x. So our third problem is a sketching and shading problem. So I've already drawn out the three equations on an axis that we obtained before. So we've got these three lines and at each of these three lines our function, which we're going to call, we're going to call this our function f of x, y. So at each of these, function of x, y is equal to zero. And we're looking for the points at which it's greater than or equal to zero. So for each of these sections, we can just consider one point inside the section because each line is where this function is zero and the function is also continuous. So we know that there's not going to be any nasty jumps in between. So it will flow in this section. It will either become positive or negative. So it will become gradually positive and then back down to zero or it will become gradually negative and then back down to zero. There's not going to be any point in here where it goes from one number to the next immediately it will always gradually flow and so we know that because of this there's no point in here where it can be equal to zero it's only these three lines that we found are the ones that are equal to zero so if we sample one point in this segment one point that we know is in this segment we can see whether it's positive or negative so in this segment we know the y-axis is in this segment so if y is positive and x is 0, so let's take y is 1, x is 0, then we have our function is x cubed minus 4x squared y minus xy squared plus 4y cubed equals 0, but it's not, sorry, not equal to 0. Um, so that's our function. And so if we're looking at y is 1, x is 0, all of these terms disappear because x is 0 and y is 1. So 4, one, four times 1 cubed is 4, which is positive. And we are looking for the points where f of x, y is positive. So this, because this point is positive, we know this whole section here onto infinity because it extends upwards onto infinity. This whole section will be positive. We also actually know that because our terms look like this, so none of them have a squared, they're all single terms, they're all linear, there's no point at which 
it goes down to zero and then goes back up. For example, if we have a, I'll just draw it here as a little sketch. If we have a function with an x squared in, it'll go to zero here and then touch and then go back up. And that's what the x squared looks like. So that would be, for example, if it has x minus four squared and that's at four. But this isn't the case, none of them are squared, so we know they're all linear. So if we think of almost going round this wheel, it will always cross through zero. So it will never touch zero and go back in the same direction. So it will never be positive and positive next to one another or negative and negative next to one another. So actually all these segments alternate as you go around. So I know that this will be negative this will be positive, this will be negative, this will be positive, this will be negative, and that's positive again, which is, is nice. It all links up properly. So I can go and sketch them. It's, mu it's quite easy to also just check this outright. That was a little trick that I just explained there. So if you want to check these outright, so we know this one shows that f of x, y is four, which is positive. Then the next one, so for example here, we want greater than a qu y is greater than a quarter x and y is less than x. So if we say we let x is 4 and y is 2, that will be about here. 4, 2. Then a quarter of x is 1, so 2 is greater than 1. And x is 4, so 4 is greater than 2, so it's between this, so we know it's in this section. We can then substitute in 4 and 2, and we'll see that f of 4 and 2, where so our function where x is 4 and y is 2, will be negative. And we can do that the same for all of these, finding a point and checking whether it's positive or negative, and you will see that it go, goes around like this. You have alternating positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. But remember, this is only due to the fact that each of the terms is linear here. So if we had a squared or if we had a cubed, we wouldn't know that for certainty. We have to know that they're all linear to make sure that they all alternate around like this. I hope this video was useful for you. Thank you so much for watching.